Hi, I'm Dan Cordopassi. Welcome. Uh, before we get to Box of the Month, I wanted to talk about a couple of things. Um, we had a kind of a busy summer, but um, I've gotten back to work on the train room, which is pretty exciting. I'm still working on the room itself, uh, you know, doing like some drywall and stuff like that. So uh, not directly working on the trains, but at least it's a step toward, you know, getting my layout built and uh, I'm having a good time doing it. So I think it's going to be pretty nice. I'd really, I really want the room to be nice. Um, when someone walks in, you know, want it to be finished and uh, not full of bugs and, <laughs> you know, just kind of a pleasant place to be. So um, anyway, we're working on that. Um, also, uh, I put out another model building tips episode recently. The first one I did last year, which was on removing decals, and this one was on wheel gauge. Um, I do plan to do more of those. Uh, some people have been asking about that. Um, and I also, uh, among the subjects I want to cover are all the things that I usually uh, critique models for in reviews like coupler height and body wobble and those kind of things. Uh, I'll, I'll be doing shows on those eventually. Um, so that's in the works. And also um, I will hopefully soon be getting back to the SP Consist build because I know people ask about that too. So, and I of course would like to get those diesels finished. So, and there's some other things I have in mind to do. So I, I think it's going to be a pretty good uh, you know, end of this year and, uh, you know, going into next year, there'll be some cool things happening on the channel. So anyway, uh, thanks for watching and let's get to the box of the month. Okay. Welcome to box of the month. Um, if you don't already know, this is Nicole Hi. and, uh, she got her cast off. Yay. So she's getting, uh, Better slowly, yeah. <laughs> slowly but surely, lots of physical therapy, lots of tabletop. Oh, I'm so <laughs> close. I'm so close. Oh, every day I get a little bit closer, but you know, oh, yeah. Ah. So, <laughs> anyway, uh, she's been, she's been do, doing really good. I guess, uh, you know, when your arm is immobilized for weeks, then, it, you know, it gets stiff and then you have to work to get your range of motion back. Yes. So. Lots, lots, lots and lots of work. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, but uh, thanks to everybody who's, uh, you know, left comments being, uh, you know, asking about Nicole. Uh, so. Yes, I really appreciate it. I really appreciate all the comments and, you know, working hard to get to a better place and that way we can be out and real fanning a little bit more too, because I really miss chasing trains <laughs> so yeah. bad. Yeah. You know, but uh, this has been a little, you know, cumbersome. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Yeah, so let's wanna... get to some trains, right? Okay. <laughs> let's do it. All right. I'm gonna pull out this shiny one first. Okay. All right. This is? It's a Genesis. Genesis. Okay. I did notice, by the way, because I kind of have my boxes semi-organized and um, we're actually getting toward the end of the locomotive pile. Oh, really? Yeah. So um, I may start mixing in some, some freight car boxes and things. <laughs> I didn't think there was an end. So. <laughs> no, there's an end. <laughs> anyway, this is an Atherin Genesis Santa Fe GP7 in the... Uh, Zebra stripe scheme. Ooh. This was, I think, what they had in the 50s. A little before my era of my normal 1990s era, but these are just so cool. I really wanted one. Ooh, I like that. That is pretty. So it's, they're cool. They got the um, basically overall black with just the, the silver stripes. It's got mm. them on the ends too. So that is pretty. really nice. I like that color scheme. Yeah, and it's got the little Santa Fe logo on it. Mm. So, Harold. Anyway, um, other than that, it's pretty much just a regular old GP9. But it's the only one of these, the only GP9 I have in this color scheme. So. Well, that is cool. I really like it. Yeah. I can't wait until Sunday. These are all rolling. They, that'll get. We'll get there. <clears throat> we'll get there. I know. Got 
gotta crawl before you can walk. Right. right. <laughs> well, I was thinking about it. It's actually been since 2006 that I actually had a layout, oh, other wow. than my little diorama that I made for taking pictures. Oh, going forwards and backwards. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's fun, but after a while, it's like, okay. Yeah. I want to be off with the trees and the buildings <laughs> yeah. and all the little people. <laughs> yeah. So it's this one. Another I can't see the Genesis. Front. Another Genesis. Okay, this is a Southern Pacific GP40 P-2. A black and red scheme, my favorite. This is... Um, this one is also a little bit before my era, but I got this one because I grew up on the uh, peninsula in, in, you know, south of San Francisco, and I used to see these things all the time going up and down, you know, before Caltrain, oh, it was okay. Southern Pacific. So um, this was one of the commute engines oh, that right. they would, uh, you know, run up and down. And then on, on the weekends, a lot of these were sent out and hauled freight. But, you know, during the week, these would be running up and down between San Jose and San Francisco. Did that window just open and shut? Yeah, a lot of these... Ooh, that makes me so happy. <laughs> a lot of these Genesis engines have windows that, that move. Mm. The only... The only trouble with them is sometimes they're really loose and they kind of just move around oh. so a lot. So sometimes I put, put like just a little spot of like white glue or something just to hold it okay. so that they don't flop around when it's running. Like a little open? Or... Yeah, you can yeah, okay. you could put it slightly open or fully yeah. closed or whatever you want, you know. I'm a big but... fan of models that move. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. It's... I have not done anything to either of these yet that we've seen so far. They're pretty much straight out of the box. And when you say that, you're talking about weathering, DCC, DCC, yeah, parts. these didn't, I didn't buy, I normally don't buy engines with DCC in them because I like to do it myself. Right. So these are just pretty much the straight from the factory um, engines. So speaking of that, this one says DCC quick plug equipped. Yeah, that means it has a plug in it so you can put a decoder in it but easily. But it's still you doing the DD. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. So this is another SP engine. This is a... Another, like, gray and... Gray and white, yeah. This yeah. gray and red. Yeah. This is a tunnel motor. This is one of the SD45 T-2s. So I think nice. before we had uh, a box that had a bunch of the SD40 T-2s in it. These are um, slightly different body style, but basically the same idea. Okay. I really like the part that sticks out over here. With the yeah, fans. that's that's the dynamic brake um, fan. That was when they um, usually when they're going downhill because the real diesels have electric motors on each axle usually. And when they're going downhill, they can use those to generate electricity, and it slows the train. Okay. And then they, they use these to dissipate the heat that that creates. Nice. And it makes this sort of a whining noise, which I always used to... Um, I can remember being on vacation up near Donner with my parents when I was a kid, and you could hear it. Even if you couldn't see the trains, you could hear the dynamic brakes whining and echoing through the mountains, and I always loved that. It was really cool. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So this is definitely going to be... One of the, uh, you know, I'll probably do some detailing to make it look a little more 1990s-ish, but, um, and weather it and all that. Yeah. But. Very cool. This one's kind of a different box. Rapido. Rapido. Rapido trains. That Ooh, is. Amtrak Phase 3. Since you're still doing that, I'm just going to get a head start up here. I can't even get it off. It's hand. Yeah, oh, that's okay. Goodness. So this is a Rapido F40PH. Eee, Amtrak. Amtrak, yeah, this is... I really like seeing Amtrak because I think about our trip, you know, and lots of more trips to go on. That'll be fun. Yeah. Riding the train was a blast. It was. I really enjoyed it. I had a great time. A couple of years ago, we took a trip to Indiana. Um, to see the uh, New York Central Museum that's um, out there in yeah. um, Elkhart. Yeah, and, not a uh, place I ever would have thought I would have gone. Yeah, <laughs> um, but it was it was cool because we we took the uh, 
California Zephyr out there, and then we had to switch in Chicago to the Capital Limited, which right. we were on briefly before it let us off at Elkhart. And then on the way back, because because of scheduling or something, um, I couldn't get the Zephyr to come home, so we ended up going on the Chief. Chief. Um, well, first back on the Capital Limited to Chicago, and then on the Chief to L.A., and then up the coast on the Coast Starlight. So we had kind of a quite a trip. It was, it was a really great neat. trip. Yeah, it was. One of my favorite parts was crossing the Mississippi right as the sun was setting. Yeah, that was really cool. Yeah, it that made was, me tear up. That was yeah. just amazing. Yeah. Anyway, um, I actually have two of these Rapido F40 PHs. This is the first one. Um, this is one of their first ones that they put out. It doesn't have ditch lights. Um, I have another one that uh, has those. And I got this. This is an unnumbered one. It doesn't have a number on it. Um, and I was originally going to make it 229, which was one that my dad photographed and went on a trip we took to San Diego one time. Oh, that's so cool. Um, but the one I bought with the ditch lights is 229. <laughs> so I, I'll have to pick a different number for this one. All right. But anyway, so... I'll have plenty of power for my Amtrak trains when I get to that point. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see. I'll grab this one because this is very bright. Holy cow. It's like an orange and yellow. And again, DCC quick plug equipped. Yeah, this is another SP tunnel motor. In the uh, SPSF merger scheme, this is another. Well, that an, is really pretty. Another SD45 T-2. Um, in the 80s, Southern Pacific and Santa Fe tried to merge. Okay. And um, it was going to be called SPSF, the railroad. Um, and they started painting a lot of engines. They used the Santa Fe. No, it was the SP red and the uh, Santa Fe yellow, um, in the Santa Fe war bonnet style. And okay. um, they started painting, both Santa Fe and SP painted a bunch of engines. And the Santa Fe ones just said SF, and the SP ones said SP. And then the uh, ICC government um, blocked it and said they couldn't do it. Oh. So um, oh, it, it was, they, they uh, some people call it uh, SPSF, meant shouldn't paint so fast. Oh. <laughs> but uh, anyway, um, by the 90s, there weren't, a whole lot of these left around because a lot of them got repainted back into either SP gray and red or Santa Fe yellow and blue. But um, there were a few linger lingering around, and um, this was one of the ones I found some photos of it, and it was pretty beat out and dirty looking. So that's how I want to model it. Okay. So cool. anyway, they call it the Kodachrome scheme because it reminded people of the old Kodachrome film boxes. Oh, all right. Yeah, yeah I, I could see that. Yeah, so I only have a couple of Kodachrome engines, so they'll kind of stand out when I have the layout. Right. Those are bright. Okay, so. Oh, oh another F40 pH. This is a Kato F40 pH that I've had for a really long time. Amtrak. Yeah. So this is not quite as detailed as the Rapido one, but I can work on that. Um still really good running quality so this is uh this is actually technically an f40 phr because it's that's what but anyway um this is 375 so this one was numbered from the factory because the the rapido one represents one of the early early built ones and this is like one of the later built ones okay so that's why it has a higher number that one would have to be numbered like in their low 200s Okay. to be right so anyway but like i said eventually i will have lots of power for amtrak trains very cool yes lots of electrical outlets going in right now yeah that's another thing we're doing in the train room is improving the electrical outlet situation yes all right so we have this atlas okay this is a Southern Pacific MP15 DC, which is a switcher. Now, does that mean that it works inside the yard? Yeah. Switching stuff back around? Yeah, that's okay. primarily... I mean, some, I'm getting good. <laughs> yeah. 
Sometimes they they use them like in other places, and sometimes in S, when, you know SP you could find these even on freight trains sometimes, um, okay. <laughs> depending how desperate they were. Um, but these are pretty cool. The only thing about it's kind the, of small, right? Yeah, they're smaller than than the bigger road diesels. Well, of course, because they're just switching things. Back yeah. And forth. Okay. Yeah. So um, anyway, this is a really nice running model. The only uh, thing about it that um, Atlas didn't do the SP light packages on it, so I'll have to um, fix that part. But uh, that was these were released a little bit before our manufacturers started doing the more road specific details that they they do a lot nowadays. Okay. But um, still a really nice model. And yeah. even with everything they do nowadays, you still do a lot of aftermarket work. <laughs> I do because I'm so fussy about my models. Right. <laughs> yeah. right. But it's good to be fussy though. Yeah. Have things the way you want it. Ooh, another zebra. Oh, cool. Nice. I really like this paint scheme too. This is cool. Yeah, this is um, an Atlas Santa Fe SD24 in the zebra stripe scheme. Man, it's really pretty. Still got the little handrail protectors on it. But it's basically the same paint job as the other one. Okay. So this is a just a different engine, but I thought they would look good running together. Yeah. So. Very cool. Um, anyway. I like that. That's cool. Yeah. All right. And then we have an Atlas. Another Atlas. Yes. This is an Atlas. Oh, another SP. Big surprise. <laughs> this is a Southern Pacific GP40-2. So this is a little bit of a later model um, in terms of when Atlas made it. And by this time, they were doing the SP light package. Oh, okay. Because it has it on it. Uh, this show one? me the... Oh, this is one of those ones that's screwed to the box. Oh, okay. So I can't take it out very easily. Yeah, show me the light package that you're talking about. It's uh, SP awesome. had extra lights in addition to the regular headlights. They had a, an oscillating light, which which used to like make a, a like you were shining a flashlight around like this. Okay. Um, so it was supposed to be to warn people when the train was coming to a grade crossing. It was more, make it more visible. Okay. And then they had a little red emergency light, which was if the train went into an emergency brake, it was supposed to come on. I guess okay. as a warning that there's something stopped on the tracks. Right, but, all right. But that was pretty much a Southern Pacific thing. Most other railroads didn't do that. Um, some of them had the oscillating lights, but not too many of them had the red red lights. All right. Um, which is one of the reasons I, I always thought SP was kind of cool, because they had all the neat lights on their engines. <laughs> and then i go and model the 90s when most of that was taken off, but, you know, go figure. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, That's this is... funny. Screw box is one of my pet peeves. I really don't like them very much. I mean, they do protect the model, but boy, they're a pain because <laughs> you got to have a screwdriver to take the model out. Okay. Um, so, well, not my someday, favorite thing. Someday they'll all be on a track. Yeah. Yes. Thankfully, they seem to have gotten away from that. I haven't seen too many coming on screw boxes. Okay. In rec recently, so. Surprise! Surprise! The last one is. Another An SP. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This one, well, this one's a little bit of an oddball. Oh, okay. This is a Southern Pacific, another Atherin, Southern Pacific SD39. I think this is the only SD39 I have. So we're kind of a rare engine. Not a lot of them made it compared to some other models. It's interesting how it's mostly gray in the center, but there's these little spots, and I thought one of them, I even like brushed it because I thought maybe some paint had gotten on it. Oh. It's like all gray, and then there's a dot of red, a dot of red, a dot of red, a dot of yeah, red. Yeah, sometimes the, uh, those are like the fuel fillers and the uh, emergency fuel cutoff switch. I think they paint them in a contrasting color to make them easier to find. Okay. At least until they get grimy. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, this is this is pretty cool. Um, 
So it's kind of like the slightly lower horsepower version of an SD40. But, uh, no, but bigger than the switcher. So bigger than the switcher, yeah. Actually used out on the tracks. Yeah, these were sometimes used, I think, in switching and sometimes used as road engines. So Kind of a middleman. Yeah, yeah. Okay. They, um, but like I said, an S, SP you could find, especially in the later years, you could kind of find almost anything running because if they needed an engine that ran, <laughs> you know. They were just easy. Yeah, because they weren't the best about I don't think they were maintaining their stuff so well at the end there. <laughs> oh. So. Yikes. Anyway, I guess that's... Now this one's got li little extra parts in the box for, like Catherine does with fuel tank details. Oh, okay. You can put on if you want to. Okay. Um, so, yeah, I don't think really any of these have had anything done to them. Didn't look like it. Yeah. So. So another box of lots of projects. Yeah. Although none of these, these are all relatively easier projects than say the SP Consus build because it's not a complete tear down and repaint. Okay. These will just be like tweaking. So, tweaking. Yeah. I like easier. how you say that, my Mr. Perfectionist. <laughs> like, oh, I was just, you know, tweaking it for, you know, a month. It's just tweaking. <laughs> tweaking. I love that. Tweaking. <laughs> anyway, so is that it? That's an yeah, empty? that's it. It's uh, empty. Okay. That's all it, I mean, it was pretty full, too, so I think that's a pretty yeah. well, good that, idea of how many trains can fit in those boxes. Yeah. That's the uh, last time we did N scale, and there was like train after oh train. Oh, my gosh. So many. That's so true. <laughs> it did. It took a while. Same size box, smaller trains. Yes, so <laughs> multiple trains in there, yeah. which you know was fun because they're like you know they're like the size of stuff you put on a Christmas tree. <laughs> 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 oh my God, they're so cute. They're so <laughs> tiny. I just you know, so, I don't know. Anyway, enough <laughs> of that. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, I guess that's it for this time. Yes, that is. All right, so. Uh, I guess so we'll see you next time. See you next time. Thanks, Thanks for watching. For watching.